That's a pet knot. That's yeast in there. I'm gonna try and harvest it. Not for this birthday necessarily, but a future one. Today, I'm doing a beer de guard. Or is it sometimes pronounced beer de gar? Beer de gar? Nailed it. Uh, this is a uh, French ale in the northern region of France. And literally the meaning is a beer for keeping. Back in the day, it was brewed in uh, the you know early winter, sometimes in the spring, because it could ferment uh, without wild bacteria getting in during the hot summer months. So by doing it that early, they could get cleaner fermentations without uh, yeah souring basically, or getting weird bread or other off flavors in there. Although most likely probably did have more of a bread funk to it and other weird stuff going on. However, it sounded like that it was more of a cleaner uh, flavor. So what they would do is they'd age this. And then they would uh, drink it in the summer months for the farmers and stuff like that. It's actually very similar to a Saison. And a Saison was brewed uh, in a very similar manner and aged again in a very similar way. Uh, but over time, that uh, separated. And the, the Belgians favored the you know more phenolic, uh, clovey-like thing that happens with uh, Saisons. And the French preferred more the cleaner flavor. And in fact, the French would use like Lager Strange, Cold Strange, and stuff like that that they would get from Germans. And so their brewing practices tended to be a little bit uh, more on the German side, if, any, if anything. And the bearded guards were more, a little higher in alcohol, generally speaking, and maybe a little darker. I did see something where the bearded guard in the spring was lower in alcohol, if it was brewed then in the spring, than it is if it was brewed in the wintertime. Nowadays, you know, the style's all over the place. You know, it can range from an SRM from 6 to 19. The starting gravity is anywhere between 1060 and 1080. The ABV then, you know, we're looking at like anywhere between 5.5, 6 to like 7.5, 8 range sort of. I think 8's probably pushing it. But uh, no, that's definitely the ballpark. And your IBUs, you're looking at like 18 to about 30. And 30 is like pretty much the max. Today, uh, I'm following those parameters pretty much. Uh, I'm going a little higher on ABV. I'm going around 7%. My OG is going to be about 1072. That's what I'm going for at least. Uh, my IBUs are around 27-ish range. You know, my SRM is going to be a little lighter, closer to 10. I want to be a little lighter on this because I wanted that like golden sort of look to it. And I do plan on aging this. So uh, I'm brewing it now. It's May, late May. And I want this to be done and ready to drink by next fall. Uh, sort of a weird opposite time for how they did it back in the day when they wanted to drink it for summer. But, uh, you know, my fermentation temps, I can keep it exactly to what I want. So it doesn't matter for me. Uh, and I like something, you know, a little heavier, a little more maltier uh, that, you know, could be ready for the fall. The grain profile is Belgian Pilsner, Munich 10, aromatic malt, and acid malt. And my acid malt is like 7.5% because I'm doing a no sparge. I'm doing a no sparge again. I did a last brew day and I just want to see what I get out of it. I bumped up everything a little bit this time and I'm cutting my mash water in half with distilled water so that should get my pH range to where I want it to get to. The hops I'm using is Mountain Hood and Spalt. And the yeast for this, I actually wanted to use a White Labs yeast, which is a French ale yeast. It's a WLP072. They didn't have it at the homebrew store. So I almost went with the Kolsch yeast because that was not necessarily off to the old style they were doing. So I really didn't want this to be too phenolic. I didn't want it to be too clovey. So I opted for the WLP 011 and it's an English strain and supposedly has a cleaner flavor to it. You know, I'm not gonna get any of the, the off phenols or any of the things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, ferment this normal, normal way for two weeks and I'm in the low 60s, mid 60s range. Then I'm going to basically lager it for a month, then bottle it and then let it sit for another month or two. So ideally, yeah, again, this should be about three or four months and it should be good and it should be drinkable on paper, but paper is very flammable. Uh, but regardless, let's do this. That is short for what I'm going for. That's okay though. Not a big deal. 
I estimated this to be a little bit shorter. Uh, I got 65% efficiency last time I did this, and this time I'm like at 60. I calculated for 63. Uh, so that's okay. I bumped the grain profile a little bit to compensate. Probably got to do a little bit more. I might get some swings with my efficiency doing the snow sparge, and I expected that. So I'll do it a third time for my next brew day and kind of see where I get out of that. And uh, hopefully I can get some sort of consistency going here. I'll go a little hard extra on the boil here. And if I'm a little below my uh, 0.75 finishing uh, gallons, no big deal. A little less beer. I'm okay though. Ten sixty eight. <clears throat> okay, I got where I wanted. I didn't film it, but I did have to add some DME to this. Uh, my efficiency was a lot lower than uh, I was expecting. I know I said it started at what was it ten twenty nine. So even at ten twenty nine, I had to do a seventy five minute boil and add three ounces of DME for my well point seven five gallon batch. Kind of shitty. Uh, I forgot that I had. Uh, to do a 75 minute boil on this. I had it in my mind to do 60. Last time I did this, I had to do a 75 minute boil. I should have just noticed that, that I had to do that. I should have boiled for 15 minutes first, then did my hop addition. Um, still, I still would have been short. I think I still would have been in like a 10, 57, 10, 60 range. So yeah, I'm gonna try this again um, and uh, see what happens, but it's all right. I got what I wanted in the end. And yeah, so uh, all good. <laughs> It's been a while since I've done this, but I usually do it with high gravity beers, or higher gravity beers, I should say. And this one is uh, 1068, so I'm gonna use this oxygen tank and get some ox pure oxygen into this, if I can get it to turn on. There it is, there it is. See some bubbles going on there? I'm gonna do this for about 45 seconds or so. Oxygen is great for yeast health. Really helps your cell walls build and grow and do their thing. And you can't see the stone there, but there it is. I think it's like a 0.5 micron is what I have. I'm not sure what I bought actually, but I think 0.2 you can buy also. But either works. Make sure you don't touch uh, this with your fingers because the oils can gum up the uh, little holes in there. So you now I use like a paper towel to pull it off, usually, or uh, you know my shirt, but. Works well. This is the yeast. I'll do about three quarters of the packet. On the back it says to do for five gallons at 1065, either three of these or three liters or two liter starter. I figure about three quarters of it is plenty for my one gallon batch or just under one gallon batch here. So aside from my dog shit efficiency, I ended up getting what I wanted. I did make some adjustments. Gonna let it go, like I said, for a month. Um, do a secondary, lager it, bottle it. Hopefully by October I'll have something drinkable. Well, aside from my dog fish, what? <laughs> 